performance art has helped me integrate my creative framework into my social ADD, so it's kind of more successful. This is Culture Beat, the creator's project's bi-weekly roundup of the most fascinating, mind-expanding, breathtaking art stories from around the world. In this episode, we witness artist Henry David Nobody Jr.'s transformative self-portraits, discover experimental halftime choreography with LA City's Municipal Dance Squad, and face our mortality with J. Rim Lee's Infinity Burial Suit. Performance artist Henry David Nobody Jr. discovered Instagram in 2014, which set him off on a journey of radical transformation documented through a series of surreal, frightening, and hilarious selfies. Today, we're just gonna make like a double-headed hot dog, a resemblage. So the first thing to do is to get this attached to here, and um, well, the easiest material to do that is this right here. I make resemblage, which is the combination of the words resemble and collage, essentially like a temporary sculpture. It looks like it was done with Photoshop or other types of alterations like on the computer, but it wasn't, so they're, they're all real. It looks pretty good right now, doesn't it? This part of my work, I think about it as like turning advertisement, which is a, kind of a mask, literally into a mask that I'm gonna wear. And these are just like images that I get from magazines. Anything that has big faces in it. This character is different than some of the other ones uh, because it tastes good. The act of transforming myself and recording it on my phone, because I do selfies as I work, to study like the light and the form and what it looks like. When I come into it, maybe I'm not feeling so good or I do have a lot of self-doubt. I post it on Instagram and share it. It's a big rush and it's like a big lift. There's an element of humor, there's an element of satire, but I think that's from the point of view of wanting to take reality apart and create a discussion about it. I want to ask questions what it is and I want my fans to do that as well. The LA City Municipal Dance Squad was founded in 2014 to perform halftime shows for a women's community basketball league. But the group's mix of inspired dancing and irreverent choreography has since evolved into a unique form of performance. There's a lot of dance troops and they are really good. The thing that, that we're not is that serious or that good. But the thing is, is that we don't have to be. The style of dance is sort of like tongue in cheek, ironic dance squad halftime burlesque. I like to call it performance art because I feel like I'm like being dangerous while I'm doing it. We're basically like all the girls who got in trouble in, in our ballet classes and we've made our own little squad. I think that's where a lot of people's fear in thinking that they can't dance comes from because it's watching those perfect polished dancers and knowing that you're not gonna do that. And when you release that pressure and you actually just, you do what your body can do. The most important thing is that everyone's having fun and expressing their, I don't know, I'm gonna say sense of sexuality because I think that that's something that gets pushed down a lot in women. It comes out of Angela's imagination. So it's this like glorious childlike place that then turns and becomes very, very sexual and then turns and becomes like militant. And you know, we're just kind of like, we're all, we're all dancing around in her brain. It does feel like we're all teenagers in our backyard coming up with something and we're gonna perform it for the neighborhood, except now we all know what we know. So now we're coming at it in a less innocent way, which I think is what makes it weird. J. Rim Lee's mushroom burial suit started out as an artistic provocation on death denial, but it's since given rise to a startup for burial alternatives. At her New York Fashion Week event at the Ace Hotel Gallery, J. Rim demonstrated the suit in a burial ceremony. The Infinity Burial Suit contains microorganisms, including mushrooms that will help decompose the body and clean toxins. We live in a culture that's very much in death denial. We preserve bodies in toxic chemicals because we want to think that they're sleeping and not dead. 
We use a lot of toxic materials for caskets and we use a lot of natural resources in the funeral process. And I was thinking about what is the sort of the far end of that spectrum from death denial to death acceptance. And I learned that mushrooms are the master decomposers of the planet. They're the interface organisms between life and death. And I just thought, this is amazing. The mushroom can be a symbol of death acceptance and I can use this mushroom in some kind of wearable. The idea behind today's performance was to really get the public to engage in the suit. The suit is like any piece of clothing. It's placed onto the body after it's died. The body's just buried with the suit on. Developing the project has like really challenged me to confront my own fear of death. I don't claim to be some kind of death-accepting ninja or to not be afraid of death at all. Planning and thinking about your death and thinking about what you want for your death is incredibly beneficial. I think that it helps you appreciate and be grateful for living and for life. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Culture Beat. We'll see you next time for more great arts and culture stories.